Welcome to the Root Cause Revolution podcast with functional and integrative nurse nutritionist and energy medicine practitioner, Audrey Christie. Hey friends, welcome to episode 243 of the Root Cause Revolution podcast. If you are new here, welcome. And if you're a returning listener or one of my many loyal subscribers, thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging out with me um, and listening to me ramble on about how you can get to your root cause and heal your body for good. I just want to introduce myself real quick. I'm Audrey and I help women heal, whether it is losing stubborn weight, getting rid of those symptoms that just won't go away, or rebalancing the body from a long-term chronic or autoimmune illness. I help you uncover your root cause or teach you how to find your own root cause and heal it for good. So we've been talking about hormones a lot. And so I thought it would be nice to talk about some reasons why you might not be seeing the results that you want. Uh, you, I hear this a lot, Audrey, I am working out, I'm eating everything right. I have cut calories and I've d- I'm doing it all so well, but I just can't get rid of these few extra pounds or the weight around my midsection or my fatigue and low energy, right? I'm really struggling to get everything done in a day. And so today I want to talk about how it's probably not the volume that you are eating, right? Um, Oftentimes our body can't let go of weight because we are so inflamed. And so that's what we're going to talk about on today's episode. Now we've talked about before how inflammation gets a really bad reputation and it's not all bad. It's really the body's first line of defense against invaders um, that it doesn't like, know, or trust. At least the inflammation that we're talking about, the chronic kind. Acute inflammation is what helps our body heal. Um, It's the first line of healing when there is an injury or surgery, right? So you've probably heard me say that after surgery or injury, don't take Advil, don't take ibuprofen, don't take NSAIDs or non steroidal anti inflammatory medications. And that's truthfully because they halt the body's healing response, right? Um, so you don't want to do this. Now, if you're wondering if inflammation could be one of the reasons why you are not able to lose the weight that you have been checking all the boxes and doing all the right things for, then ask yourself a couple questions. Number one, you're doing all the right things, but are you full of energy? Are you full of energy? Do you wake up feeling energized to meet the day? Do you have a 3 p.m. slump? Are you ready for bed before bedtime? Those are all signs. The second thing to look at is do you have skin trouble? Are you having cysts, acne, rashes, uh, bumpy skin? Sometimes they call it chicken skin, like on the backs of your arms. The third thing to look at is are you suffering from seasonal allergies, either right now or, you know, during spring or fall, whatever your allergy season is? That's a sign. Are you having headaches? Are you having mood issues? Are you anxious, depressed, angry, all of those things? Guess what? These are all signs that no matter how many calories you count, and guys, it's not a calories in, calories out game anyways, and no matter how much time you spend at the gym, you're not going to get past a certain point because you have signs of your drainage funnel, your, uh, your drainage pathways not being open, your mitochondria struggling to produce the energy that you need, and inflammation, usually chronic low-grade inflammation. That's what causes all these little things that just won't stop, right? And what happens when we ignore it, when we push through it, well, bad stuff happens, right? Illness, autoimmune disease, arthritis, Alzheimer's, heart disease, depression, asthma, and even the big scary stuff like cancer. So, there is a way to know for sure. Uh, you can have your labs looked at but from, from a functional and integrative perspective. That's what I do for my clients, and I'll put a link in the show notes for that as well. Um, you just have your regular labs run at your doc. You send them over, and I tell you kind of the behind the scenes, right? Your doc will tell you if there's a diagnosis associated with it. I'll tell you where you're trending functionally. If you have um, signs of underlying inflammation and gut inflammation, and if your nutrition is working right, all those kind of things. So today we're going to look at some of the common culprits, some of those things that are causing um, this underlying imbalance. And some of these things might be things that caused the imbalance, as in past tense, because if you ate a certain way for the first two decades, three decades 
of your life and now you're trying to change it, it takes a while to reduce that inflammation. And often because of the inflammation that we've held in our bodies, we have we have to actually undergo a specific order of detox in order to get past it. When you have toxins in your body, guess what your body does? It in- envelopes, envelops, envelopes, it puts it in a fat cell <laughs> in adipose tissue and it stores it in the body. And then when you're working so hard to lose weight and get rid of um, excess body fat, what happens is your body goes, okay, I'm going to pull, you know, fat cell D off of row A out and process it through. Oh shoot. Can't do that. It's got a toxin in it. Ball it back up in adipose tissue and put it back in the body. Right. And that's a very, um, simplified view of what's going on. So one of the, one of the common culprits that I see is sugar. When we eat way too much sugar, and we're talking more than about 100, 120 unbalanced carbs in a day, and that number's a little different from everybody, your body just can't process the glucose fast enough. And what happens is, even if we're counting calories and our calories match up, or even if we're counting macros and our macros count, match up, one macro that we often overlook is fiber. Fiber is really, really critical. Um, so it's not always obvious what has sugar in it, right? But chances are, if it comes in a package, it is preserved with sugar. The obvious things are things like sodas and snack bars and candy and baked sweets and coffee drinks. But the not so obvious things are those items that are packaged and what we call greenwash. They're packaged and they look like they're really healthy options, but they aren't. They may even say on the package that they're a healthy option, but they aren't. Um, The second culprit is vegetable oils. Vegetable oils in a packaged food are rancid. And this you'll usually find in things like mayonnaise, salad dressings, barbecue sauce, crackers, bread, potato chips. Uh, There are some brands that are better choices. Siete is a better choice. Uh, Canyon, um, Siete chips, Siete almost anything, but Canyon chips are also a better choice. They're actually made with avocado oil. Generally, the oils that we're looking at here are things like sunflower, safflower oil, and palm oil. Uh, And yes, foods can be fried in them, but oftentimes when we think we're eating all the right things and we're doing all the right things, we're eating a lot of prepackaged, you know, quote unquote, diet foods that aren't really uh, helping us out in the right way. So what happens is those are very high in omega-6 inflammatory oils. They are generally rancid when they're packaged, but they're also very low in omega-3, which is the anti-inflammatory oils. And then almost more importantly, we can rebalance omegas, but more importantly, they contain vegetable oils that are in packaged foods contain high levels of AGEs or advanced glycation end products. AGEs have a really big impact on your metabolic health. They are harmful compounds um, that are formed in foods. Now, our body has mechanisms to eliminate these compounds, but it requires a lot of antioxidants and a lot of enzymes. Most people are eating mostly pre-prepared or packaged products that are high in AGEs, and so your body can't keep up with eliminating them. And so they begin to accumulate in your body. And of course, high levels of AGEs are linked to the development of many, many diseases, diabetes, heart disease, kidney failure, Alzheimer's, premature aging, along with a whole host of other kind of lesser known, less less popular, if you will, uh, chronic and autoimmune illnesses. Another common way or place that people who are counting calories trying to lose weight end up stuck is if they are eating a lot of gluten. Again, gluten can be found in uh, crackers, bread, potato chips, salad dressings, sometimes mayonnaise. And a lot of people will poo-poo, if you will, the idea that gluten sensitivity is common. Um, I've helped thousands of people over the years get better from diseases that are inflammatory in nature, ranging from arthritis to psoriasis to inflammatory bowel disease to Crohn's um, and having them cut foods out that contain gluten have been a huge, huge jumping off point because gluten has such a pro-inflammatory effect, effect, right? Um, Getting rid of gluten and even better eliminating all grains, right? Because they all have a pro-inflammatory effect on the body. Um, 
generally what happens is we will be working to heal arthritis, psoriasis, some sort of chronic illness. They give up gluten and then all of a sudden they're like, dang, Audrey, I lost 15 pounds without even trying. Right. And it's just because their body is able to release and get rid of those toxins um, and inflammation associated with the gluten. And it's not that gluten in itself is a toxin. It's that when you are sensitive to gluten, well, gluten is kind of a toxin. The, the, the chemicals that are sprayed on most wheat products are a toxin. And then our bread in the U.S. has a much higher level of gluten. It's bred into it, not, not to use a play on words, but it's bred into the wheat that becomes our bread, right? And then they process it, strip out the grains. They leave just the gluten. It's a whole um, combination of things that lead you down this inflammatory pathway, And so what happens is you stop eating gluten and that little insult to your system every single day stops, right? And then your body can finally let go of what it's been holding on to, which is often weight. And often with that weight comes a whole lot of emotions that are sort suddenly energetically uncovered and pushed out as well. Another one on this list is dairy. I have found really gluten, dairy, and eggs are the three top food allergies and sensitivities. Um, So we're talking milk, soft cheeses, yogurt, butter, all that stuff. Um, The majority of people don't tolerate foods well. And frequently people will argue and say that dairy isn't a problem until they eliminate dairy from their lives for about four to six weeks. And when they do, headaches, skin breakouts, bloating, runny nose, sinus issues, all clears up. Right. And those signs are the initial signs that their internal inflammation is dropping as well. And so when that internal inflammation starts to drop, guess what else happens? Weight starts to fall off effortlessly. Right. So if you're not sure whether dairy bothers you or not, I recommend eliminating dairy foods for four to six weeks and then carefully reintroducing them and then kind of charting and understanding and journaling about what kind of feelings you felt. Uh, If you go to my website, AudreyChristie.com, right on the front page, you can get a little uh, ebook. And with that ebook in the series of emails that follows, you'll get what's called a food mood poop journal. And it's very, very helpful in deciphering what foods may or may not be causing your um, issues, right? The next one I want to talk about is artificial sweeteners. Artificial sweeteners are everywhere, even in so-called health drinks. Just about the only artificial sweetener I kind of give the green light to is organic stevia and organic monk fruit sugar. Um, And it's not because I'm a fan of the keto diet, because I'm not. I think it has some aspects that you can use it for clinically, but in general, it's it's not good. So you know these are bad for you. I won't harp on them too too long. Um, if you don't think they are cancer-causing, they are, um, but they also cause other problems. They enhance glu- glucose intolerance and insulin resistance. They lead to quick type 2 diabetes, and they are often something that are relied upon for weight loss, right? They disrupt your gut microbiome, and even people who aren't trying to lose weight, even people who are just taking fitness type supplements to try to improve their fitness. It's a common problem. It's in a lot of those foods and powders and products and pre-workouts and all that stuff as well. Know that these things are disrupting your gut microbiome so that you can't properly digest other stuff. So they're leading to food intolerances that you might not have otherwise had. They're leading to your body holding on to inflammation, which leads to your body holding on to weight. So read, 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 read those labels. Now, if you notice this theme here for those first five things, what do they all have in common? packaged foods, right? So if you're making stuff from scratch, from scratch. Now, a lot of times people say, well, Audrey, I don't eat anything packaged. And then I'll get a food mood poop journal back and it's got pasta, you know, gluten-free pasta, you know, gluten-free um, hamburger bun, gluten-free bread. All that stuff is packaged stuff, right? So the theme for those first five is definitely, definitely packaged foods. But there is a sixth thing that is stopping you from losing the weight you're working so hard to lose, and that is stress, right? And stress leads to hormone disruption. It leads to inflammation. It leads to changes in your cellular DNA. And it actually starts an immune response in your body that then cascades into a whole host of other issues. Stress is usually the hardest one of all of these things that I have listed here to give up, but it can totally 100% be done 
right? So what you want to do is do what you can to simply mitigate stress, sleep, meditate, move your body. And I don't mean moving your body like a big, expansive killer workout. Um, You can lift weights two to three times a week. You can do some cardio in between. But oftentimes when we're in a spot where we're trying to lose weight and we're stuck or we are trying to heal a chronic illness and we're stuck and we can't get past the next thing, like we're really, really stuck, people will say, well, shoot, I just need to go to the gym more. No, that is adding more stress. You need to learn to mitigate that stress. You need to put things into play so that you can, your body can recover from that stress, sleeping, meditating, eating well, which we've talked about throughout this episode. And then, and then your body can release the weight. It can be, um, it can work to neutralize and detox the things that you need it to detox. All right, friends, that is it for this episode today. As you know, I am always rooting for you. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions and I will see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Root Cause Revolution podcast. Be sure and subscribe on your favorite podcast provider. Ratings and reviews are always appreciated.